It always comes to this. Hello there guys, doing another Tattoo Progress update today. Um, where I last left off, I showed off my uh, red on black hand tattoo. So that is mostly healed now. Um, it doesn't look mostly healed, but it is mostly healed. Um, hands take a long time to peel and uh, it did really, really well. But my hands have a lot of scar tissue. As I've showed off before, I had a ton of... Uh, infection in that hand at one point and so um the knuckles in particular have almost got like a different texture to them than normal skin it gets really wet and goopy and um tissuey when it gets tattooed and it's even one of i don't fear having many tattoos done anymore but i do fear tattooing those knuckles just because of more more or less the emotional scar tissue that exists around them for me in that there was a time when they were basically melting off my hands. <laughs> I don't really enjoy working on them. So um, whenever I have to, to work over those knuckles, I'm always afraid of what the result will be, but it turned out pretty good. About as good as I was expecting. Now, again, this is uh, still peeling, but as you can see, we got pretty good red here. So it's gonna be a similar tone to the lower arm and not quite as bright as the upper arm but overall this is actually done better than i expected the part that was weakest the first time we brushed it over the hand just lightly was um right here but it looks like we've mostly solved that problem and again we had the approach to the hand that um we're not going to get it super solid so um we went with a purposely sort of broken design um sort of like a drip so um when this all peels, it doesn't really matter if these points stay as they are now. It's just kind of kind of um, fade off onto the fingers. And uh, obviously we'll probably be, well, we definitely will do a second pass over that at some point. But for a first pass over the knuckles and fingers and all that, most of the hand, pretty good. For whatever reason, this part is the weakest. Um, right here does not want to take the red, but it's not a super big deal. You don't really notice it until you turn it this way. So overall, not too bad. Now, obviously I had another session since. I um, I mentioned in the last one that I would probably be doing another one of these videos the next day. I've been pretty busy. Um, I didn't get tattooed by Rick this week. I'll get into that. Um, I'll get into that maybe in the next video. I've got a lot to talk about here. Um, it's been a busy week at the shop. Um, so this is about five days since my last tattoo session. <laughs> I've been meaning to do it every day since, but I just haven't had a chance. So the, set, the tattoo that I have had done since is actually mostly healed already. So go ahead and show it off. Hopefully this does the trick. I don't even know if it does or not. Here's hoping. Um, yeah, so that's my uh, rose on the back of my head. It's... It, uh, it's been through some shit. That tattoo has had about five different reworks and seven passes overall now. And uh, it's got a long storied history. So I'll just get into that. Um, first off, people are gonna say, how many fucking roses does one guy need? Well, to begin with, I had a lot more roses in my first bodysuit. Um, and it was part of my first bodysuit. For some reason, though, my first bodysuit, even though it had way more roses, it didn't grab the uh, the attention that the new roses do. Maybe it's because they didn't read as well, but I had roses all over my chest. I had the red roses on my head. I had uh, two roses on my wrists. I had some roses on my legs. You know, I had roses all along my neck. I had five of them around my neck. Um, yeah, I had roses everywhere. So that's a constant theme. I've explained that several times on videos here already. I'm not going to get too far into that. But that rose on the back of my head was um, actually a very meaningful one, believe it or not. Um, that rose I got done for uh, 
my son's mother who passed away in um, 2016. Um, she had Crohn's her entire life. Um, well, from the time she was 11 anyway, to the time she was deceased. Um, and in the last few years of her life, she developed um, pancreas cancer. Her mom died of pancreas cancer the year we met and we spent about four and a half years together. Um, we broke up just after my son was born, but we still had a lot of love for one another, even though there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of turmoil there. There always is. Um, it wasn't particularly messy. We sort of had one of those relationships where you sort of just, um, you, you kind of distance or fade apart. It didn't so much explode. Um, the nature of our relationship was that she was always sick and I was always working. And when I wasn't working, I was at the hospital visiting her. So uh, we we were kind of always in a crisis. And the moment that the crisis was sort of over um, and we could just be together without any of that, it was almost like we didn't know each other anymore and we had grown pretty far apart. Um, I've heard of that happening with other people too, but um, Anyway, the cracks really set in and you kind of notice them more when you uh, have a kid with someone. It's, uh, it makes everything that's been hiding under the surface come to the, the forefront. And it turned out we were probably not okay as a, as a partnership for a lot longer than we thought. Um, but we just had to be strong and stay together and, you know, make it work. Um, anyway, yes, having a kid can put a lot of pressure on a relationship in that kind of a state. So if, if you're in that sort of a state, you probably won't make it. Um, not to say you can't, but we didn't. Anyway, as I said, there was, we had a lot of love for one another and, uh, she was my first fiance. We were together from the time I was 16 until I was about 21, close to 21. And, uh, still one of the strongest people I've ever known, no matter how sick she got, no matter how, um, how bad life seemed. She was always positive. Um, she had, and at that time I was kind of the reverse of that. I'm a little more balanced these days, but when I was younger, I was a little more prone to depression and, uh, kind of, um, pessimism than I am these days. Um, we made a good balance that way. Um, anyway, when she died, and I've said this before, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was tell my son that their mother had passed away. Um, lots of people will ask me things like, what was the most painful thing you've ever done? And they're not, they're not thinking life experience. They're thinking like tattoos and piercings, and, um, split tongue, any of that stuff. But to be quite honest, the most painful thing I've ever had to do is sit my son down and tell him that his mother has passed away. And I don't think I'm ever going to have anything trump that. So with respect to her, um, it was just a few days after she passed away, my tattoo artist heard about it and he really, really wanted to, uh, he wanted to do a uh, tattoo in memory of her with me. Um, his books were full. Um, this is being, this is Lee who did it. His books were full for about four months at that point. So he brought me in, uh, he brought me in before the shop was open one morning and uh, we did that uh, rose that was originally supposed to be like a wild rose type thing on the back of my head in memory of her. It was done originally in uh, black and gray and we put in the, uh, the bottom of it strength because um, as cheesy as it may seem just to write strength, um, that it was the one word that I would always think of whenever I thought of her. Um, even when I went to talk with her in her dying moments, um, in her last kind of 24 hours, I went and visited her in uh, palliative care and she must have weighed about 65 pounds. Um, she's quite shrunken. I'd seen her like that a few other times, um, being that she had Crohn's. For anyone who doesn't know this, uh, you, you will fluctuate weight quite a bit. Um, she was often quite light, but that was the weakest I'd seen her. Even in that moment when we were discussing what would happen with Ivan and his future and uh, me being his sole parent and uh, some of the things that she wanted him to, to learn and know when she was gone, 
she had a deep belief that she was going to make it. She really, truly believed she was going to pull through. She was talking about they're going to start her on vitamin C infusions and things like this. And um, they had already taken her stomach. She tried, she tried to have her stomach removed, but the cancer had spread um, pretty far by that point. So, and it can go pretty quick. Um, when I was talking to her that day, I knew, and she, I'm pretty sure she knew too, that that would be our last discussion we ever had. Um, but there was this belief in her always that she would get through it. Like, it was like, I've always survived. I'll survive this time. Um, I'm not saying goodbye to my son. You know, he's going to know me. We're, we're going to be fine. There was a lot of that in the air. and But at the same time for me, there was this um, overwhelming kind of, admiration for that but also a sadness of kind of knowing the inevitable and you you know you're kind of like you're staring death in the face to some degree but you can't say it and you can't acknowledge it and and i truly think that she she still thought she was going to make it but within uh 12 hours of me speaking with her she was pronounced dead and i got the call and i took off some time from work one of my co-workers uh covered for me. Um, they gave me everything I needed at work and uh, we, we set up a funeral and it was just real small. Um, as I said, like she didn't have much for family um, necessarily that was involved. Her mother had passed away and her, her father was gone her whole life. So a lot of it was me and my family. Um, and yeah, uh, just different things like that. Anyway, to get back to the tattoo, um, that was probably the most cathartic one I ever got. And I'd already had a lot by then. I already had a lot. And uh, I've got three tattoos on my head that mean more to me than any other tattoos I've ever had. And that's one of them. And that's part of why it's gone through so many changes over the years. Uh, since then is because though I've changed my look and I've changed um, the style and all that and will continue to, that tattoo has to be um, kind of... It has to endure with me, and I'm, I'm going to keep that one for her. Now, I'm not overly sentimental generally about tattoos. I think they have their own meaning, and they don't always have to make sense to everyone else. But for me, um, that one there will be one that I'm buried with, um, taking that to the grave for the two of us. And it's almost like it's my commitment not to give up on her and her vision for my son's future as well. There's been a lot of things that she believed in that, um, I've tried to um, bring him up with, um, not necessarily just for my own sake, but in honor of her. And uh, some things, uh, some things you keep with you forever. And uh, I know I've gone on and on before about um, as long as you know it's there, um, it doesn't matter if you cover it. And I still believe that for most tattoos. But that one there was less about even the image at any point, even more of just kind of um, a memorial and I don't have many of those. I've got one for my mom, I've got one for my dad and I've got one for my son's mom. So anyway, um, I hope people have enjoyed that one. I'm really happy, or this one, I'm really happy to uh, have had this tattoo touched up. There's gonna be a lot more work done back there to, to make the whole thing cohesive again. But I'll go ahead and show it off. Hopefully I'm doing a good job. My hair has grown back a little bit since. This is fully peeled now, so it stayed pretty bright. We used opaques, um, white and black on black to get this done. And we basically just made a whole new rose over top of the uh, the old one in, in the same similar shape. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.